Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my Blitz Chess game number 46, where uh, my opponent played the uh, two knights defense and I uh, went into the uh, fried liver attack, which he allowed. So pretty entertaining and exciting here. Let's get started. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then uh, bishop c4. Here, let's put on the opening book for a second. Bishop c4, you can see, is the second most popular choice after bishop b5, which is uh, the Rui Lopez and what I normally play. But uh, bishop c4 leads to some entertaining chess. Uh, you can follow up with bishop c5, and white can go into the Evans gambit, um, or can play more solidly with uh, d3 or c3. Um, or this move here, knight f6, second choice. Um, and this is the two knights defense, obviously because it's called, <laughs> obviously called that because of the two knights. <laughs> and uh, you can play solidly as white here with uh, d3, but uh, more enterprising play is knight g5. And uh, this was criticized as being a beginner's move by uh, somebody, maybe Tarash. Um, but uh, it has its points. For one thing, it's, it's a little bit hard to defend this square here on f7. And the knight and the bishop are ganging up on it right away. So... So white is attacking prematurely, but if you can force your opponent to make some defensive moves, you, you don't necessarily fall behind in development. That's just something you have to watch out for. So um, black can ignore the attack and counterattack with the move bishop c5. That's the Traxler or Wilkes Bar variation, but, um, <clears throat> but d5 is the most common move here. And that basically is just sacrificing a pawn in order to get out of this uh, bind on uh, f7. But in return, uh, black gets a lot of activity for his pieces. And the normal follow-up here is knight a5, going after the bishop. Um, the way my opponent played it, he played knight takes d5. And this leads us to the fried liver attack after knight takes f7. The idea is knight takes f7, king takes. It's the only piece there. And then the queen here, check, forks the king and the knight. And you'll see that happening. Knight takes, king takes, queen here, check. And the king, if the king goes back to e8, um, if the king goes, yeah, that's, if the king goes back to uh, g8, first of all, I think he gets mated in short order, so <laughs> not too many choices here. But uh, let's see what's the computer recommends, e6 or e7. Oh. But uh, anyway, if he moves to the side, if he doesn't go to e6, basically you can, you can at the very least uh, pick up this uh, knight. And then you've won a pawn, and you're attacking, and, and you're, you're in good shape. So the way to play this as uh, as black, if you try to, if you want to play this, <laughs> is to try and hold on to the knight by playing king to e6. So it looks a little crazy, but you're up a whole piece as black, and at some point you can give a piece back if necessary to uh, stave off the attack. So the right way for white to continue here is knight c3, and um, it's just a logical move. You can see there's already two attackers on the knight and two defenders. And so let's let's take a look at how this might go. Um, knight c3, new variation. Um, and knight c b4 is the most common move, although it looks like knight c e7 is playable too, just defending that knight. Um, but let's, let's take a look at the more enterprising move, knight c to uh, b4. That defends the knight, but it also attacks here. And then um, Look at this, bishop b3, queen e4, castles. The book move is actually a3 here, which is kind of weird. But uh, you harass the knight, force him to take on c2 with check. Move your king here. And, uh, oops, I did something wrong. Move the king to d1. Right, you want to force this knight to move. Knight takes over here. And, uh, then you can get this guy. So uh, anyway, this is the book line. The computer rates it as about even. Um, but you can see it's kind of a crazy position. This this knight is almost trapped. And what's the count? Basically, if you get this knight back, then you've just sacrificed the exchange for a pretty good attack. Um, and the knight is sort of trapped now, and, and black's king is exposed. So uh, you can play on, although the computer thinks uh, black can defend. but. It's tough to uh, tough to defend like a computer. Um, so let's go back to the notation tab, and we'll show what I played because we got out of book right away. So king e6. After here, instead of uh, developing my knight, bringing more pressure onto his knight, which is the most logical move here, um, I castled. 
and uh, now um, <clears throat> looks like uh, black can get an advantage here by playing a move like b5 hitting my bishop or um, maybe even knight a5 again with the idea of harassing the bishop so let's take a look at how this might go knight a5 queen h3 check or bishop takes d5 check and yeah, I don't want to follow all these variations let's look at the uh, bishop takes d5 check queen takes d5 and uh, queen to g3 and this looks like it's okay for black he seems to be out of danger and uh, what's the material I have uh, and I'm still down a piece for a pawn it looks like um, so so my move castles was not good because this idea of immediately uh, harassing the bishop with uh, with knight a5 um, but my opponent didn't play that. He went with the usual plan of knight cb4, which is the, the main line uh, if I had played uh, knight to c3. And so here um, I play knight c3, and we sort of transpose back into the main line. You can see the evaluation is sort of even here. He plays c6 to support his knight, and I play d4. And uh, right here, um, and it looks like black has a lot of choices, queen f6, King d7, King d6. So basically, uh, uh, King d6. I'm not so sure about King d7. I think you know, uh, Black is just trying to get over to uh, safety. I guess uh, the the route to safety is is over on these squares here. So d6 or d7 is just a way to to get back to that side of the board. Um, instead, my opponent played Knight takes c2, and um, and I thought, uh, I had to think about this for a while. I mean, he's hitting my rook here. And when he takes that, I'm just going to be down a, a rook and a piece because I've already sacked a piece. But his king is still in the center, and uh, I can destroy some more of his cover by, by taking on e5. So I did. And actually, the computer approves of this move. So my screw-up comes later. Now, um, computer recommends... Oh, yeah, see, the computer thinks uh, white is doing well all of a sudden. And, uh recommends moves like queen h4 um, but not when my opponent played knight takes a1 so now and uh, the more the more you let the computer think about this uh, the uh, the better it likes uh, white's position I didn't play any of these good moves it looks like there's two good moves here rook d1 or knight d5 and uh, I think it's just um, after knight d5 uh, rook d1 is going to happen pretty soon anyway or after rook d1, d1 then knight takes d5 is going to happen um, so let's take a look at one of these variations to see what I should have played. Um, so first of all, the count and the amount. He's got two rooks and four pieces, and I have one rook and three pieces. So he's up a rook and a piece. Um, so unless I have a really strong attack, it's hard to see how I'm going to survive this alive. But uh, knight takes d5. Um, Queen takes d5 just seems to be giving giving up. So let's let's play c takes d5. Then rook d1. So uh, now you can see the point of rook d1. It pins this pawn against the queen. And how is black going to support this pawn? Um, I've got three attackers on it. He's got two defenders. And no other piece can get here in time. And so this is how, uh, how these gambits work. I've sacked uh, two pieces. And yet, uh, all of my pieces are out here attacking in the center, and his pieces are, are off to the side, and they're not helping out for the most part. Even even the knight, which was gathering material, is now out of play somewhat. So it says h6 is a try for black, and then bishop takes d5 check, leaving this pawn undefended. Um, let's see, if the king comes up here, he might get checkmated. Let's see if that happens. Yeah, it doesn't say. King takes, e5, yeah, queen, f4, mate. Okay, so let's take a look at this mating pattern. Ah, uh -huh. the bishop is defended by the rook. The queen is covering these squares, and the bishop is covering that square, and the bishop is protected by the rook. So that's a, that's a nice middle-of-the-board checkmating pattern. <laughs> okay, so we can't take that pawn. It says queen takes d5 is the only move here and uh, so if he tries to go to d7 how about how about just uh, e7 so e7 is another maiden in one just 
just queen to f7 check. Okay, here's another mating pattern for you. The queen is covering uh, these squares. And uh, this square is covered by the pawn. And that square is blocked by the queen. So that's another nice uh, middle of the board mating pattern. So king can't go to d7. So um, king can't go to e7. So try d7. And then uh, now the other bishop can come in. Bishop to... What's that? Bishop g8 check. g8 is over here. Oh, it's a discover check. Bishop g8 check. And uh, this, this row is taken out. Uh, he could come here, uh, but he gets mated again with the queen, so he has to run to this side. So king c7 puts up the toughest defense. He sort of wants to run to this square anyway. Um, oh, but it looks like I'm going to pick up the queen. So queen to c3 check first. And uh, king can go to b8 or to b6. Ah, oh, but he's losing the, the queen here anyway. So, yeah, it looks like devastation. If we back up, I was going to lead to a mate in so many moves. Um, the only line here that doesn't lead to mate after uh, bishop takes d5 is queen takes d5. So let's see if he just tries to give back material. Queen takes d5. King to e7. So there's still not a lot of squares. Let's see. And what's the material? I have a queen, a rook, and a bishop. He has two rooks, two bishops, and a knight. So a queen is roughly worth a rook and a bishop. And my rook and bishop are worth the other one. So he has a knight, and I have some pawns. So material is close to even here, actually. So it still must be that white just has this tremendous attack. And you can see that the pawn here is helping. Um, gives a square here for the pieces to... Uh, be protected on. It says the best way to proceed here is bishop e3. And then um, how about if he tries to escape with the knight? And then there's a mate in six. So the idea of bishop e3 was this move bishop c5 check. Okay, taking more squares away from the king. Okay, so that's that should give you the general idea of what's going on here. Let's go back to the game. So he just played knight takes a1, and my follow-up should have been rook d1 here, or and uh, and knight takes d5, or knight takes d5 and rook d1. Hmm. So I didn't see that. And in fact, um, I just didn't didn't want to him gobbling up more material. So I played queen e4, protecting this pawn and preventing the escape of the knight. But now the uh, the score is swung back in black's favor. So let's see how it goes. He plays uh, b5, hitting my bishop. Good move. And uh, I didn't want to uh, go here and let his knight escape by taking my bishop. So I went to e2. It says here I should have just take, taken on b5. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you're, when you're in this deep, you just have to sacrifice more material. So knight takes b5, and I'd still be in the game. <laughs> so bishop e2. Now he starts to get a pretty strong advantage. He takes off the knight. And uh, brings his queen out. So if he can trade off the queens uh, evenly, then his troubles will be over. So I throw in a check. Get my queen away from his queen. Get another check. Attack his queen. And try and capture his, uh, his uh, knight. I thought uh, he wasn't going to have an escape square, but I forgot this square was covered by his uh, bishop. Yeah, so the uh, knight has an escape square. And now um, it's pretty, pretty much in... Uh, in black's favor, you can see that the score is switched to uh, strongly favoring black here. I avoid queen chasing, trading, hoping to uh, hoping to uh, maintain some chances. But uh, my opponent plays solidly here, and uh, that's always a good strategy. You know, if you can uh, make progress by threatening to trade when you know your opponent doesn't want to trade, then you can you can get your pieces onto good squares that way. So uh, you know, I try to get some counterattack going with the pawns, uh, but uh, he, he very cleverly takes advantage of this pin here. So I thought I was forking these two pieces, but uh, he can just take that pawn because of the pin of this pawn against my queen. So I get out of there. Um, 
He grabs the, another pawn. I, I get a piece, but uh, it's not going to be enough. And in fact, this leads to a mating attack. We're, we're now at a mate in two. So where is my last chance to avoid this? Oh, it's already mate in four, mate in three, mate in five. Queen b7 check. So instead of king h2, I guess I could have gone to g1 to try and last a little longer. But after this, the mate in five is uh, inevitable. So uh, excellent game from uh, Get the Poison Out and uh, some interesting tactics there in the opening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll see you again later. Bye.